coming up on this episode of Student DV. We'll get our name tag, we'll catch some kindness, and we'll ride the train of thought. All this and more on this creative episode of Student DV. Welcome to Student DV. I'm your host, Mia Daniels. Coming up on today's show, we'll take a look at some great creative expression videos, like this one from Cordova High School. Here's Kindness is Contagious. <coughs> Uh-oh. I think I caught it already. Our next video takes a math lesson to a whole different level. Here is student producer James to tell us more. It's um, relating um, how like everybody should be treated as equals to something in math. I originally kind of uh, brought up the idea to the group and then um, uh, we all collaborated on the script kind of. And my favorite part was like uh, deciding where to film like all the scenic shots and stuff like that because it's really uh, fun and interesting to like find out like what you can produce and like like cinematic shots and stuff like that. I hope you watch our video, The Transitive Property of Equality. Math is hard for everyone, right? Most people don't like math. It's complicated, filled with equations and logarithms and graphs. There's only one thing that I thought was pretty easy in math. So here's the story. We were sitting in geometry class, second period. Our teacher passed out the notes for lesson 4.2. On top was the title, Transitive Property of Equality. The rule said, if A equals B and B equals C, then A must also equal C. Finally, something easy enough for me to understand. Something so easy for me to understand in math is so difficult for us to understand in life. Gays, lesbians, queers, these people feel discriminated, trapped every single day. But they're people just like everybody else. If heterosexual is a human, and homosexual is also a human, then heterosexual must be equal to homosexual. Why do people constantly use these words in a derogatory form? To put others down, when clearly, in the transit property of equality, in math class, it says, they're equal to everyone else. Huh, would you look at that? Someone has labeled me. But you know, I'm more than just a host. I'm more than just any one label. And so is our next student producer. Let's go to Mai from Winston Churchill Middle School for more. So my partner and I picked the topic name tags because we thought it was an issue that um, wasn't really obvious to students in school, even though um, it's something that people do unconsciously. For example, name tags is essentially a symbol that we put for labeling other people, like nerd, stupid, idiot, etc. Like all those things that we label other people and categorize them. I think the hardest part was the storyboarding because we wanted to have like a unique way for our video. We didn't want it to be just a plain old video because we really um, connected with the issue and we wanted to make um, a really good video on it. Please watch me and my partner's video on name tags. Here's what every kid needs to learn. If you don't identify yourself and decide who you are, other people will do it for you. A quote by Josh Shipp. We live in a society that places name tags upon each other. If we allow for name tags to be placed upon us, we will subconsciously believe those name tags. Labeling attempts to define a person 
chipping away the self-esteem and self-worth of someone. It limits a person to their name tag. Calling someone desperate, nerd, freak, ugly, stupid, fat, or retard are all forms of labeling that should never be used. Adolescents are being labeled every day for stupid qualities that are most likely not even true. Labeling and name tagging can easily begin to change behavior and personality. Soon, the target can even begin to see themselves in that label, and their view of self-worth can drop. Vladimir Lenin once said, a lie repeated often enough becomes a truth. This is our story on name tags. Labeling people as nerds is misguiding because we're just people embracing the knowledge around us. Just because I'm not as smart as others doesn't mean I don't work as hard. You can label me as ugly as many times as you want, but you can never force me to be ashamed of myself. We are all human beings. We all fear the unknown. We all fear change. We fear rejection, failure, but we need to step out of this box, trapping and chaining us to our name tags. We need to allow ourselves to find our own self-identity and not let people hand us our identity. It's time to unmask yourself from your name tag. One small step can make a difference. Let's start small by ridding yourself of your name tag and stepping beyond those small labels. I rid myself of this name tag. I rid myself of this label. I rid myself of my label. Gossip can be very hurtful to people, and students from Del Paso Manor Elementary School are no exception. That's where student producer Elisa comes into the picture. She wanted to make a video that would help her classmates learn what gossip can do. Tell us more, Elisa. 
we want to talk about how gossip can affect others greatly. My name is Elisa Yan. My school is Del Paso Manor. My video I made is gossip. Gossip. Many kids believe having a chat on the playground about someone's up for this harmless, but in reality, words hurt. Using words to gossip can hurt others. Fat, stupid, dumb, short, weird. Negative words and gossip breaks people's spirit. It makes people question themselves. Do people like me? Why me? Am I really that bad? They come to a conclusion that they are worse than the others. Those who gossip should realize the effects of the words on others. There is another way to use your words that is in a positive way. Instead of using words to bring people's feelings down, use words to build people up. If everyone respects each other and their feelings, there is a much better result. Once they do, there is a much happier community. Our next video uses poetry to tell an important message. Here is Battleground from Emily at Winston Churchill Middle School. Sunshine on a silent meadow, daisies rustling in the breeze, the birds happy call, twinkling in the spring, waves rolling on a beach, crashing to the seagull's beat, trees waving in the never stopping breeze, snow falling on the ground, the smell of fresh rain in a small town, thunder echoing through the clouds, a toad's croak, soft and loud, the warren's rabbits make a new mound, but they are all found by the one with a crown, oblivious to all around, who destroys all things found. There is no meadow around, only loud, bustling towns. The sunshine is like a stove ticking around and round because of the creature with a crown. The creature with a crown, who walks with various tools it brings around. Tools to drown others that are earthbound, and for the creature with a crown to die in its own battleground. Because of humans' actions, the earth is dying. Global warming is a real and present threat. Our oceans are filling up with styrofoam and plastic. We will die in our own battleground unless we do something right now. If you want future generations to be able to enjoy this wonderful place we call home, then do something. The choice is yours. Do you want to live in a world that has only trash, global warming, and pollutants, or a world that has rivers that flow without the muck that we pump into them? A world where the species of animals that inhabit the planet are thriving instead of going extinct? The choice is yours. What is the world you want to live in? If you're looking for a good book to read, students from Andrew Carnegie Middle School have you covered. Let's get our first book recommendation from Gannon. My book trailer, If I Stay, is by Gail Foreman. Uh, my favorite part was editing it because I love editing videos. Uh, and then my produ the other producer's favorite part was probably going up in the snow. And uh, after comparing our trailer to the actual movie trailer, I thought we did a pretty good job. My name is Gannon Bardazian. I go to Andrew Carnegie Middle School. And my video is If I Stay, the book trailer. What is important to you? Friends? Family? School? What if one day those all changed? Because right now, the only thing important to me is surviving.
If you're looking for another book, student producer Heath has a different suggestion. Tell us about it, Heath. Well, Looking for Alaska is about this unpopular high school kid that actually goes off and uh, goes to a boarding school in Alabama. And so it's kind of him and getting used to the boarding school and meeting new people. Uh, my favorite part would have to be editing and just putting it all together and adding the background music in and just making it an actual movie instead of just a bunch of random shots. I just want the viewers to know that the reading can be fun and it's cool to use your imagination and use the reading and paint a picture in your head and it can be really more like a movie if you just think about it. Heath Kieran, Andrew Carnegie Middle School, looking for Alaska. All my life I've been an outsider. I didn't fall into any particular group at school. And then I made a decision that was life changing. I decided to go seek my great perhaps at Culver Creek Boarding School in Alabama. And then I met her, the girl who launched me into my great perhaps and managed to steal my heart in the making. She was gorgeous, clever, wild, utterly fascinating and very unpredictable. I knew I was in love with everything about her, but then tragedy struck. <laughs> Things just weren't the same. I wasn't the same. You definitely need to have a strong imagination to make videos like these. Our next producer tells us all about the power of imagination. Here's Andrew Carnegie Middle School student, Jamie. It's, it's a stop motion video, and it's more like me and Keone, we made it together. And we were just like thinking of stuff to do, like using our imagination, just putting stuff into it with clay models. I learned a lot about stop motion. I have to be really precise on the movement, otherwise it looks like they're just skipping across the screen. My name's Jamie Hawkins, and my school's Andrew Carnegie Middle School, and my video is Let Your Imagination Fly.
Painting can be a great outlet for your imagination. And if you're lucky, it might teach you something about life. Here's Center High School student Alisiana to tell us about her video, Painting Life. My video, Painting Life, is about, it's basically me just doing a painting and talking about um, the process of creating and how you just need to get things done and work through it when you have doubts about yourself. Hard parts about making it was doing dynamic shots while you're doing painting. So you, you like had to have your like arm over the side and like pulling the camera over <laughs> as you're trying to paint at the same time and look convincing. <laughs> My video is Painting Life and I hope you enjoy it. Life is messy. You can try your hardest on one thing for the longest time. Sometimes, no matter how many times you restart or keep trying to pre-plan, plans just won't work. But aside from your frustrations, you have to be persistent. Maybe the problem doesn't lie in how much you didn't plan or prepare for life, but in the hesitation to start. Instead, what if we dove in, trusting our talents to guide us, knowing that we do have an end in mind, even if others can't see it, even if we can't fully see it ourselves. Because we are not visionless, it is all there. Our minor masterpieces. Every step toward an end result is a learning process in itself. And you're never wasting your time when you're learning. And by the time you reach the end, you might just find you enjoyed yourself and find yourself laughing at all the mistakes you thought were stupid or careless or in the moment life shattering. You can look back and everything gets put in more perspective. And in the end, you know, you enjoyed the journey. What do you see when you look in the mirror? Student producer Alexandra shares what she sees in the next video. But first, let's hear more. It's about um, it basically follows the journey of this girl who feels pressured to wear makeup in order to feel beautiful, but then she has this moral realization that she doesn't need that to be beautiful. I feel like all of my life, from peers and close family members or the media as well, that there's a lot of pressure to look a certain way or act a certain way in order to be beautiful, but I've always, it's always been pretty easy for me to know that it's not true and I shouldn't listen to them. But for some of my friends, it's not as easy, and I, wanna, um, and I want the world to know that you don't have to be a certain way to be beautiful because you define your own beauty. The location that we filmed in, there was only ever a small time slot to film, and so we had to do that every day, and then we could only film every other week, so we had to try to work really efficiently. Video allows me to find a creative outlet to put my ideas into because I don't, I don't usually get that opportunity in real life. My name is Alexandra Huynh and the name of my video is When I Look Into the Mirror and I love it if you watch it. without my mask, they act like it's a crime. They say that to be pretty is to cover up my flaws. Smooth skin, big eyes, small nose, pink lips. I have to have it all. So I paint my lips, draw on my brows, and make my lashes long, but when my masterpiece is finally done, I feel like something's wrong. There's so much pressure to fit in. I'm told to cover up, as if the person that I am isn't already enough. A pretty face of makeup is all they want to see. But when I look into the mirror, I know. This isn't me.
Last up today, it's time to follow Winston Churchill Middle School students on their train of thought. All aboard! That wraps up this episode of Student DV. If you would like more great student videos, you can always check out our website at seccv.org. I'm Mia Daniels. Thank you for watching.